This is six features I wish Keyshot had. I'm going to be spending a lot of time in this Keyshot scene here where I've just got an Austin Mini that I modeled really plainly and simply in the scene. But I'm going to show you some features that I really wish that Keyshot had that would make my life a lot easier as a freelance product visualizer. Now you might be looking at this list and say, Sam, if you don't like Keyshot so much, why are you using it to render all of your scenes? But Keyshot really is the one-stop shop for product visualization when it comes to real objects that you're going to produce in the real world. That's why industrial designers, product designers love Keyshot. You can take the exact files that you have for manufacturing, for tool making, all of the same CAD files, and you can import it into Keyshot without needing to remake anything. It also has such an easy, simple workflow and I really enjoy using Keyshot. So before I start getting too negative, I just wanted to get that out of the way. This video is also sponsored by Vizun and my new Encore collection on the Vizun website. What is Vizun? Well, you might know them as uh, previously known as Moment. This is a full, ready to render Keyshot asset company. Okay, so Vizun provide you with the assets, provide you with the scenes, provide you with the materials that you need to simply plug and play into Keyshot. And now I've launched this Encore collection with them and I'm super excited. So please check out Vizune, go and check out their assets and make your Keyshot life simpler and more effective. Okay, so the first point that I want to talk about is actually, after all of that preamble, not in Keyshot at all, okay? So even though we can import SOLIDWORKS files and Rhino files and all of the different CAD softwares where you will be sending those CAD files off to manufacturer to make molds, to make injection molding tools and things like that. We can also import objects from programs like Blender, okay? So this is the Austin Mini that I've made in Blender. This is the first car that I ever made. It's not perfect. Please don't look at the geometry so much. But what I want to draw attention to are these squares and these facets that you'll find on all of these surfaces, okay? Now, I can click on these modifiers and deselect the modifiers down here to show you this is the exact geometry of the part, okay? So you go into edit mode, zoom in, and you can see that the polygons that I've got, the quads that I've got set up here, that is the actual geometry. Now with modifiers in Blender, you can start to smooth those out, but you still get these geometry uh, artifacts down here. Now the way around this in Blender is once you have the part selected, you right click, you have the option to shade smooth or shade flat. Okay, right now it's on shade flat. All I do is press shade smooth. It's as easy as that. And then look at the difference in that surface. Okay, so this is, um, if I go back to shade flat, it's all the same geometry. It's all the really simple squares. But what Blender is doing is just smoothing those out really nice and easily to give you a nice surface finish. Now, the way around that into Keyshot is what I have to do is if I want to render this into Keyshot is because I don't have the shade smooth option in Keyshot, I have to come over to our subdivision surfaces, okay, and then slowly increase and every time I increase, those squares are going to get smaller and smaller. The only way around that into Keyshot is to make these smaller and smaller and smaller. That means that your file sizes get so, so big, okay? So because you're using each of these corner points, right? That becomes a little piece of geometry, a little piece of data that Keyshot needs to read. So if I go up to five, it's just about going to do it. And by this point, that's probably smooth enough for me to import into Keyshot, okay? But it would be so much simpler if I could just import geometry that is this large and this low uh, fidelity and just have Keyshot smooth it out for me. That would be so good. So my first feature that I need Keyshot to have is shade smooth. Now, I don't want all of these features to just be based on nothing. I don't want to have these features just plucked out of nowhere. So I am basing each of these six points on something that Keyshot already has. And the way that I want to show this, if I zoom into these tire treads, Keyshot already has the radius sort of modifier. Okay, so if I import this CAD with purely straight sharp edges, I can click on the geometry, come over to radius and hit something like two millimeters. And then it's going to give us this highlight. 
So Keyshot is already doing stuff in the background to smooth out geometry, and that's why I don't think asking for the shade smooth feature is asking for too much. Okay, next on the list is all to do with the camera lens settings. Okay, so if I go to create a new camera over here, come down to depth of field, we all love a little bit of bokeh, and I'm gonna pinpoint exactly where I want that depth of field to be. And you know what? It's not giving me enough. I actually quite like sometimes when you have way too much depth of field, it makes the object look tiny, right? And I love the fact that this little mini could be about 10 centimeters long. What I've wanted for ages in Blender is to simulate realistic cameras, okay? So I'm not talking about simple camera blades, which has been a new feature uh, since I think he shot 11, where you can tell it how many blades in the aperture uh, the, the camera is symbolizing. What I want to happen is for these options to be encompassed in a real camera lens from the real world. Let's say Keyshot partners with Sony or partners with Nikon. And what I want to do is be able to come down here, click from a, a drop down menu, a Sony 35mm 1.8 lens or a Sony 85mm 1.8 lens. And I really want to be able to have the chromatic aberration locked in. I want to have the bokeh shapes, the bokeh spheres, the different shapes of this blur is all dependent on the camera lens that you use. So the fact that Keyshot has introduced the camera blades and the number of blades you can select, I think the next logical step would be partner with a camera company to get more realistic renders using real life, real data from camera lenses. Okay, feature number three is all to do with the material graph. Now I've brought up a material graph here. This is a genuine graph uh, that I'm using for a current freelance project. I think it's all zoomed out enough and complex enough that you won't be able to um, discern what is going on on screen. So I'm, I'm happy to share this. But what I would absolutely love in this instance where you can see the main material at the top here, the main material is pretty intricate. Okay, it's, it, it spans a large uh, plane where I'm adding in various um, different camouflage nodes to break up the tessellation and break up the repeating pattern. But it's very clearly how I've organized it here manually myself. It's very clearly the main material. And then I have labels on top of that, which again can grow in complexity. And um, I'm using various maps, various color to number nodes to um, drive what that label is made of. So the big feature, the big exciting feature that I want this material graph to have is allow me to put these into folders, allow me to organize into folders, into groups, let me turn off folders, turn on groups, and let me really organize and keep organized this material graph. Next up, we can jump back into our Austin mini scene. And let's say, for example, that I rendered out this image and the black gasket, the rubber gasket around the window screen was not quite the right material or maybe the metal here. Imagine that this is already rendered out in another file. This is, we already have the JPEG of this. So what I would do is come over to region, right? Because I just want to re-render re this little section here and you can see how inefficient this is here, right? So, but I want to take that one step further. And I think this square box that we're using to region is too constrictive. And what I want to be able to do is use a pen tool to tell them exactly where I want the region to be. And then not only that, I want a pen tool to tell Keyshot what to exclude. And I don't want to wait for all of that to res up just so I can get the gasket around the outside. And I think just by selecting those pixels and avoiding anything else, I've had it in the past where this central material is so complex and it takes ages to render. It might have translucency in it. It might have caustics, all of this. And I really want to avoid rendering that central piece. Having the pen tool to tell Keyshot exactly where to render would be game changing. And then finally, let's say that we have the renders set up perfect and we have one view, we have two views. We come over to Studios and we press New. And we call this one Above. 
call this one side. Now, over here, uh, we're grabbing, with our studio sets, okay, we're grabbing camera, environment, image styles, and model sets. And if you don't know how to use studios, by the way, I have a video on that, which I'll link above. Go and check out how to use studios. It is game changing. Please use studios in your Keyshot workflow. But this has never made sense to me because you can come up to landscape and choose something like a 16 by nine image. So over here at the presets, you can choose different uh, aspect ratios to render your scenes at. However, the aspect ratio here is not included in the image style that you create further down, okay? So for example, I would like to have a, a 16 by nine studio here called 16 by nine side. I would also then like to have a square one by one side So that when I hit render on all of these images, it just does it all automatically, right? And not only that, but I can, I should be able to set up different cameras and say, okay, this is the side camera for the 16 by nine, right? So when, I, when we did the 16 by nine, and actually I think that zoom is pretty small. So I just zoom out and say, okay, that's the 16 by nine. I readjust where it's going to. For some reason, also, I can't lock the aspect ratio right now, which is annoying because <laughs> my point is that I want a 16 by nine aspect ratio. There we go. So then we have perfect. And then we have the 16 by nine square, which is above it, right? I should be able to, I should be able to assign this, the three quarter square to a square aspect ratio. And I should also be able to assign the 16 by nine version to the 16 by nine aspect ratio. Then when I as assign the model sets and assign the studios, it's all locked in. I can just hit render on everything and I have various assets for different social medias, different web banners. That's how easy it should be. And I don't know why the resolution and the height and resolution and the aspect ratio is just above the image style and not captured in the image style itself. It really baffles me and it should be the case. As a reminder, Vizune is here to offer you ready to render Keyshot scenes. It's gonna take all of the hassle out of remaking Keyshot files yourself. They are ready to render downloadable scenes, materials, assets for your workflow all you have to do is import, drag and drop your model in and it creates really impactful, really easy scenes instantly. On top of that, I can also give you 10% off your first order with code GET10, okay? So 10% off your first order. Thank you to Vizune for sponsoring this video. Go and check out the brand new website as well as the Encore collection. I'm really excited to see what you guys render with these assets. So those are the six key features that I need in Keyshot. They're not world changing, they're not earth shattering, but they would just make my life as a freelance product visualizer so much easier as a power user. Hopefully the people at Keyshot will watch this video and hopefully they'll read the comments as well. So if you have any other features that you need in Keyshot, let me know down in the description below and we can chat about it in the comments. As always, leave a comment down below if you learned anything because I would love to hear about it. And don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and everything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.